She don't beloved family. It's your girl, Sophia Spiritualite, and I got cut off, which is fine. That video was getting a little bit long, so we're just going to do a part two. <clears throat> and um, I'm just going to pick up where I left off. We're getting ready to go into some books. <clears throat> and, um, of course, this is, you know, this is all about the Olympic spirit that is returning, that has returned, that is coming into claim its rightful role and co-lead with the most high and the most high spirits as opposed to being used and abused by the Gentiles and the heathens, which is what is happening now. <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me, these spirits do want to work with us. Um, you know, and these are the mother spirits primarily, um, how she operates on this plane. And so, um, you know, this, this is where we're going. This is where we are right now. So let's get into the books. All right. Um, actually, I'm not going to talk about this book first. The first we're going to go into the Arbitel of Magic first, okay? We're going to read about the Olympic spirits. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, here we go. And um, all right. The third septentary. They are called Olympic spirits, which do inhabit the firmament. And in the stars of the firmament and the office of these spirits is to declare destinies and to administer fatal charms so far forth as God pleases to permit them for nothing, neither evil spirit nor destiny shall be able to hurt him who the most high for his refuge. Oh my goodness. Who hath the most high for his refuge. Therefore, if therefore any of the Olympic spirit shall teach or declare that which is his star to which he is appointed portendeth. Nevertheless, he can bring forth nothing into action unless he be permitted by the divine power, which as I basically what that's saying is, you know, the father gives the authority and the mother carries out the action. That's this is, that's exactly what this is saying, which is what I've been saying. It is God alone who giveth them power to effect it. Like I said, he gives the authorization. Therefore, rest in this. Let God be thy guide in all things which thou undertakest, and all things shall attain to a happy and desired end, even as the history of the whole world testifieth and daily experience showeth. There is peace to the godly. There is no peace to the wicked, saith the Lord, i.e. There, no there will be no Jacob's trouble. This is the Gentile's tribulation. These people will have no peace. Guess what that also means? When they want to do something, they'll get nothing but wickedness in return. Okay. There are seven different governments of Olympic spirits of the spirits of Olympus by whom God hath appointed the whole frame and universe of this world to be governed. And their visible stars are Ariton, Belthor, Phalic, Haggith, Ophiel, or Lucifer, full after the Olympic speech. Eat every one of these hath under him a mighty militia in the firmament. Um, Arathon, they tell you how many people, how many they rule, right? Um, I'm not really good with the Roman numerals, so I'm not going to try. Um, so there are 186 Olympic provinces in the whole universe, wherein the seven governors do exercise their power, all which are elegantly set forth in the astronomy, all of which all which are elegantly set forth in astronomy. You can see them in the stars, okay? That's what that's saying. But in this place, it is to be explained what manner these princes and powers may be drawn into communication. Ariton appeareth in the first hour of Saturday and very truly gives its answers concerning his provinces and provincials. So likewise do the rest appear in the order of their days and hours. Also, every one of them ruleth 490 years. The beginning of their simple anomaly in the 60th year before the nativity of Christ was the beginning of the administration of Belthor and it lasted to the year of our Lord 430 to whom succeeded Phaleg at the 920 year, right? And thenceforth Haggith ruleth until the year 1900, which is why we know Ophiel is ruling right now, Lucifer or, or the Sibyl. Um, magically the princes of the seven governments are called simply in that time, day and hour when, wherein they rule visibly or invisibly by their names and offices, which God hath given unto them and by proposing their character, which they have given or confirmed the governor Ariton, which is Saturn, hath his powers in 
those things which he doth naturally, that is, after the same manner and subject of things which astronomy are ascribed to the power of Saturn, those things which he doth of his own free will are, that he can convert anything into stone in a moment, either animal or plant, retaining the same object to the sight. He covereth, um, that would explain kind of like the rolling of the, um, the stone over the tomb, you know, because he converted, um, he converted the stone to a sheet maybe and the sheet back to a stone. He converted treasures into coals and coals into treasure. He gave familiars with a definite power. I mean, this this energy would have had to been in control when Yahweh was shot. And in order for Yah, in for in order for him to do all the 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 things that he did, this would have had to been the, the spirit ruling. I mean, this explains why, this explains all the miracles in the Bible. Just as an aside, okay. He teaches alchemy, magic, and physic. He reconciles subterranean spirits to men, maketh hairy men. He causes one to be invisible. He barren. Um, that's how Yahushua would have been able to walk the earth for 40 days and only be seen by certain people. The barren maketh, he makes fruitful and giveth long of life. And this is his character. He hath under him 49 kings, 42 princes, 35 presidents, 28 dukes, 21 ministers standing before him, 14 familiars, 7 messengers. He commanded 36,000 legions of spirits, and his number of a legion is 40. Oh my goodness, I just told this. I was, oh my gosh. The number of a legion is 490. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. This is where your 490 is. It's the legions. Oh my gosh. Look, everyone getting all kinds of questions answered. Sister Amanda, there, there's your 490. That's the legion. Okay. Be Thor governeth those things which are ascribed to Jupiter. He soon cometh being called. He that is dignified with his character, he raises the great, very great dignities to cast open treasures. He reconciles the spirits of the air that they give true answers. They transport precious stones from place to place and they make medicines work miraculously in their effects. He also gives familiars of the firmament and prolongeth life to 700 years of God will. This is his character. He have under him 42 kings, 35 princes, 28 dukes, 21 counselors, 14 ministers, 7 messengers, 29,000 legions. Remember, a legion is 490. He's got 29,000 legions. Okay? Phaleg um, rules, ruleth things which are attributed to Mars. He is the prince of peace. He hath that have um, his character. He, okay, that prince of peace, that also explains or gives an explanation to how Adam reincarnated as Yeshua because he is the prince of peace, which is what they call Yeshua. And we know Adam is affiliated with Mars. And so that's how you get that reincarnation, okay? He that hath his character raises to great honors in warlike affairs. This is his character. You notice his character has a, a Saturn right in the middle of it. Why? Because, of course, Saturn is the mother. Okay. Um, Ought governeth solar things. He give, um, they don't say what he has. You notice how they don't talk about Mars too much. He gives 600 years with perfect health. He bestoweth great wisdom, giveth the most excellent spirits, teaches Perfect medicines, he converteth all things into most pure gold and precious stones. He giveth gold and purse springing with gold. Wow. He that is dignified with his character, he mark, he maketh him to be worshipped as a deity by the kings of the whole world. Wow. He hath under him 30, 3, 6, 5, 3, 6 legion. He administereth all things alone and all his spirits serve by him centuries golly he just has the legions and he rules everything he's he's hands on man that's the most high he's hands on you know wow this is amazing haggith governeth venerous things he that is dignified with his character he maketh very fair and to be adorned with all beauty he converteth copper into gold in a moment and gold into copper he giveth spirits which do faithfully serve those to whom they are addicted. His character is that he has 4,000 4, legions of spirits and over every thousand he ordaineth kings for their appointed season. So he, he operates in order, right? Um, which makes sense. Um, Ophiel is the governor of such things that are attributed to Mercury, Ophiel or Lucifer or Sybil. 
Um, his character is this. His spirits are ten, no, a hundred thousand legions. He g easily giveth familiar spirits. He teaches all arts. And he that is dignified with character, he maketh him to be able in a moment to convert quicksilver into the philosopher's stone. All right, fool has this character. He changeth all metals into silver. In word and deed, governeth lunary things, healeth the droopsy. He giveth spirits to the water who do serve men in a corporeal and visible form and maketh men to live 300 years. The most general precepts of this secret, every governor acteth with his spirits, either naturally to wit always after the same manner or otherwise of their own free will if God hindereth them not. Every governor is able to do all things which are done naturally in a long time out of matter before prepared and also to do them suddenly out of a matter not before prepared as all prince of solar things prepares gold in the mountains in a long time in less time by chemical art and magically in a moment. The true, the, this means that there's no limit to the, num, the amount of gold on the planet. It's just the heathens and the Gentiles no longer have access to more gold. They can't get more. Okay. The true divine magician may use all the creatures of God, all the creatures of God. Okay. Every tool in the toolbox and offices of the governors of the world at his own will for that the governors of the world are obedient unto him and come when they are called and do execute their commands. But God is the author thereof as Joshua calls the sun to stand still and have a meaning. It has to be, approved by the most high okay um they send some of their spirits to the mean magicians here we go with which they which do obey them only in some determinate business but they hear not the false magicians but they but expose them to the deceits of devils and cast them into divers dangers by the command of god as the prophet jeremiah testifieth in his eighth chapter concerning the Jews in all the elements there are seven governors with their hosts who do move with equal motion of the firmament in the inferiors do not always depend upon the superiors as is taught in the philosophy and all the elements are basically the elements are always the these these governors rule all the elements that's what they're saying but the elements don't necessarily rule like the governor's rule it, it's it's different they try to teach you that they're equal but they're not the governors are over the elements and the elements are are not as superior as the governors okay as far as the hierarchy is concerned as a man that is a true magician is brought forth a magician from his mother's womb others who do give themselves to the office are unhappy that this is that which john the baptist speaketh of no man can do anything of himself except to be given him from above every character given from spirit for which cause soever has his efficacy in the this business for which it is given in the time prefix but it is to be used the same day and planetary hour when it was given so it's got to be used at the right time god liveth and thy soul liveth keep thy covenant keep thy covenant Keep thy covenant and thou hast whatsoever the spirit shall reveal thee in God because all things shall be done which the spirit promises unto thee. The spirits are not men that they should lie. If the spirit promises it to you, you better know that it's going to come. That's why the pendulum and all of that double check, triple check, just so you can know that the spirit is going to do what the spirit said it was going to do. All right, the next one. There are other names of the Olympic spirits delivered by others, but the only are effectual, which are delivered to anyone by the spirit, the revealer, visible or invisible, and they are delivered to everyone as they are predestined. Therefore, they are called constellations and seldom have any efficacy above 40 years. Therefore, it is most safe for the young practicers of art that they work by the offices of the spirits alone without their names and if they are preordained to attain the art of magic, the other art parts of the art will offer themselves unto them of their own accord. Pray therefore for constant faith and God will bring to pass all things in due season. What this is saying is it's not necessarily good to learn the names of these spirits at a young age. You know, it's the, the young children, you know, don't need to learn this, the names of these spirits so they can call them by name. They should just really work with the spirits, you know, be led by the spirits 
and um, not be so involved with what their names and stuff are. And that's basically the same conclusion I had come to because it can cause you to lean too heavily on the spirits by name. And sometimes they change office and it's, it's very complicated. You have to be pretty deep into it to understand the hierarchy, to understand that it's an office and that the spirits that are in that office change and all of that. So, and my candle agrees with me. It's definitely better for younger people to just, you know, just work with the spirit. You don't have to know them by name. You don't have to call them by name. Just, just work with the spirit. Okay. Next paragraph, Olympus and the inhabitants thereof do of their own accord offer themselves to men in the forms of spirits and are ready to perform their offices for them, whether they will or not, by how much the rather will they attend you if they are desired. But there do appear also evil spirits and destroyers, which is caused by the envy and malice of the devil. And because men do allure and draw them unto themselves with their sin as a punishment due to sinners, whosoever therefore desire familiar, familiarly to have a conversation with spirits, let him keep himself from enormous sins and diligently pray to the most high to be his keeper. And he shall break through the snares of impediments of the devil and let him apply himself to the service of God, and he will give him an increase in wisdom. All things are possible to them that believe them and are willing to receive them and are willing to receive them and are willing to receive them. Did we just talk about that? But to the incredulous and unwilling, all things are impossible. <laughs> All things are impossible. That's not even a word, man. There is no greater hindrance than a wavering mind, levity, unconsciously, foolish, black, babbling, drunkenness, lust, disobedience to the word of God. A magician, therefore, ought to be a man that is godly, honest, constant with his words and deeds, having a firm faith towards God, prudent and covetous of nothing, uh, but of wisdom about divine things. Last one. When you would call any of the Olympic spirits, observe the rising of the sun that day and of what nature of spirit is you desire and saying a, the prayer following your desire, she shall be perfected. I'm not going to say the prayer. So that's just telling you how to invoke it. But here we go. Ecclesiastes chapter five, be not rash with thy mouth. Neither let thy bark be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven and thou in earth. Therefore, let thy words be few, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business. That's something we got to go back and read that whole thing. All right. So let's go on to the next book. And this is going to be, um, this is going to be the end of once we finish this. And this is, um, the book is called, I think y'all just saw it. Hold on. Um, what did I, how did I do that? Oh, here we go. Practical Planetary Magic. That's what it's called. All right. And this is just a chapter on the Olympic spirits. Um, we're not going to read all of that intro because we already read that. This 17th century description from Rawlinson of the Olympic spirits gives an indication of the exalted nature. They are not simple spirits, but stellar governors who rule legions, vast legions of spirits. The best way to describe them as is probably as planetary governors as the earliest reference to them in the 16th century Arbitel of Magic describes them in connection to spiritual governments and ruling provinces. The nearest spiritual creatures to which the Olympic spirits could thus be compared are archangels. Like the archangels, they have a degree of autonomy as seen by reference of their appearance. There is similarity between Olympic spirits and with their consecutive periods of planetary rule through history of 490 years as a planetary angels described by Johannes Trimius in his work, um, which consecutively ruled for a period of 354 years and four months and were in fact archangels. So the archangels do 354 years and four months and the Olympic spirits are 490 years. The Olympic spirits as the name Olympic suggests are probably from Greek origins falls. For this reason, they do not really fit well with the Hebrew hierarchy of spiritual creatures. That's not true. Um, we're not going to read any more of this fake stuff. Okay. There's, this is an extremely important distinction as all spiritual creatures described from Hebrew sources, such as archangels, angels, and demons are all composed of a single element, usually air. 
And here's a reference. The seven imperial princes or spiritual governors with their hosts are all are in all four elements and do move with equal motion of the firmament. And the inferiors do not always depend upon and are the servant to the superiors. Reference made to the Olympic spirits in Harley as a significant grimoire copied from the 17th century material worked by the magician Thomas Rudd makes an important reference to preference for working with Olympic spirits rather than Hebrew orders of planetary spiritual creatures. This is a point we wish to emphatically emphasize as the Olympic spirits and their subservient experience are, spirits are far more accessible in many ways than archangels and angels. To conclude Dr. Rudd's doctrine of the nine hierarchies of angels and to better understand him, although the glorious Metatron and Raziel may be invoked for some great signal and weighty matters to prevent the ruin of states and kingdoms and persons in great authority. Yet it is the opinion of Dr. D and Dr. Rudd, Lambitious, that ancient musician mm, that is rarely practiced since the Olympic powers are sufficient to be invo invo invocated <laughs> and advised with. The qualities of the Olympic spirits seem to be determined by the number seven, that of the classical planets. Thus, we see that they all rule a number of provinces, which is a multiple of seven. Their period rule is 490 years each, and sub-rulers are multiples of seven. Sub-rulers are multiples of seven. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, so they, okay, so they rule 490 years, but then they also rule concurrently smaller points um in in group in years of seven okay that's interesting i didn't see that in the other book so here's the list and as you can see right now we're under mercury um uh which is interesting um Wait a minute. I thought they said it started with Eric. This, this table is not quite right, but we are under Mercury. Um, the current age is under the ruler rule of Ophiel, the Mercurial Olympic spirit, uh, Lucifer, remember, or Sybil, in a world which has become so dominated by information technology. Um... An important part to mention, point mentioned in the Arbitel of Magic regarding the Olympic spirits is that they do not always turn up when they are called. If the motives of the magician were not pure, there was no guarantee of manifestation. And of course, even if a spiritual creature did appear, it might not be visible, which is why Grimworth placed so much emphasis through on thorough banishing, even if nothing is obviously visible. This is why texts say that when they when called by a true magician who is acting in accord with divine will they are said to appear however a mean magician they send some of their spirits with limited powers and the false positions they do not appear at, appear at all but send demons instead also of course it is possible that when you call a living spirit it may be otherwise be occupied and send one of its many spirits from legions to attend you rather than coming itself right and then that's just the list of their stuff unless um we already read the descriptions we already seen all of this, um, you know, this is just, um, I don't think we're going to talk about the invoking. No, we're not going to talk about the invoking. So, um, as you can see, um, as we've gone through, um, the, the, the main important part, and I'm just going to, um, prognosticate for a few minutes here, um, The Olympic spirits are far easier to work with. They're willing to work with us. They, um, they, they want to work with us, right? And the good thing about what we have done by working with the father's um, spirits first, we are able to put these two sets of spirits together and work them together. As it showed in those drawings on those stones, in order to have balance, you have to work these spirits together. The reason Solomon had peace in his country for so long is because he worked the father's angels and the mother's angels together. He used the wisdom and he used it in conjunction with the authority of the father. And that's how we have to do. That's, that's what we're being pushed into. And as I mentioned, we're coming into this Empress Energy um, you saw my live stream the other day. I talked about, you know, this is the reason why our glasses have full. I mean, 
not our glass half full. This is the reason why we have a double portion because not only do we have the father's angels who are willing and happy to work with us because we've done so much to reach out to them. We have the mother's angels who are literally equally as willing to work with us and, and waiting to work with us because they watched us work with the father's spirits. You know what I mean? And now is the time for the mother to come in and do her thing. And we have to balance those two energies. So you can't just be, you know, overly reliant on the father's, you know, angels that you don't work with the mother's angels. You really have to bring it to a balance. And so what the feeling I'm getting is that the people who aren't able to balance these two spirits, they're really not going to be successful with whatever it is they're doing moving forward, because now the point is to bring those, those spirits into balance. And it's, it's, it's been in our best interest, like I said, for us to have learned about those, um, the father spirits first and the hierarchy and all of that, because now we understand the mother spirits better and we know when and where to bring them in. We know when and where to call on the, the father spirits and we know when and where to call on, we're going to learn when and where to call on the mother spirits. And that learning is not going to be done from a book. From what I understand, that spirit is going to be downloaded directly into us. So going into this Pisces season and um, Pisces and Aries, um, this is going to be training. We're going to be in training. We're going to be in very, very heavy preparation for that spirit that is going to come and, and dwell with us, um, you know, because now is the time for it. And we, um, you know, the most important thing we have to do is love ourselves because you know, we can't, that spirit's not going to want to dwell in a, in a person who doesn't love themselves good and bad because, you know, all the things that we've done up to this point have prepared us for what is getting ready to happen. We needed all those experiences because it takes all those experiences to rule properly. This is why you have a lot of rulers. Like it said in the, um, the article, you know, the, 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 intel the intelligentsia was out of sync with the, with the pagan beliefs because they did not, they, they were out of sync. They were not in sync with, you know, this energy that was this balanced energy. They were completely out of sync. They were very heavily into the masculine energy and, and completely, you know, out of the mother's energy. And so, you know, they were out of sync with the quote unquote peasants and us, you know, black women being the quote unquote peasants of this world, you know, we have the ability to understand this delicate balance. And as you can see, there's always been a group of women who went around gathering, um, this particular information, you know, um, you know, and saving people and rescuing people, you know, in the dark, in the sleep, in our dreams. And that's funny because, um, I'll mention this, um, I had a dream the other night, um, and I didn't make anything of it. So I wasn't, I didn't record it, but in the dream, I was, um, in a dream, I was either watching or participating. There was, um, a girl, a black girl, black girl, basketball player who was being, who he seen something that she wasn't supposed to see or something like that. And so she was being chased, um, to be murdered by these, um, you know, the, these heathen, this, this, this white heathen man. And, um, every time they tried to kill her, they couldn't kill her. I mean, a bunch of different times they tried to kill her and I was right there, you know, either watching or making sure she didn't get killed. And finally they, they captured us or cause I was observing. So I don't, I can't, I think I was in it too, but I was observing. They captured us and they put us on a, a fighter plane and it was a bunch of other people on the fighter plane and um, all of a sudden, and the man who, the, the heathen who was trying to capture us was on the fighter plane. And then there was a military officer in garb, you know, that was flying the plane. And so all of a sudden we, before we could get anywhere, um, almost like we're in the Potomac or something before we could get anywhere, the plane was shot down and it was just, we, I could just feel it sinking into the water super fast. We were falling into the water. And, um, the heathen and the military person, um, perished and, um, uh, the, the, the girl we, I was, I was helping we, and the rest of the, um, innocent people, we escaped off the plane and, um, we saw that there was a building ahead of us. So we all got to the building because we hit the, we hit the bottom of the, the water pretty hard. 
but we didn't perish. So we made it over to the bottom of the building and had a door and we went in the door and we climbed up the steps and we made sure everybody climbed up the steps. And then once we got to, cause it, half of the building was submerged underwater. And then we got to a certain point where we were out of the water. So we were able to come out of, um, we got, we were able to breathe. We came out of the water. Um, and, and then we were able to just walk out of the building and we were, we were saved. It had a happy ending. And it was a strange dream to me because normally if I have a dream, I'm getting shot out of the air by, a, you know, and drown, you know, basically being stuck to the ground, I'm going to drown. You know, typically that's what would happen in a dream like that. But we didn't drown. Um, you know, we were saved. And so um, I thought it was a strange dream. Next thing I know, one of the sisters calls me. She's like, you know, I had this weird dream. And, you know, what there was this girl and we could tell that she was being um, targeted by these men. And so it was a group of women and we surrounded her. We made sure she didn't get targeted. And I brought her back to the house with me and we protected her. We saved her. And I was like, huh, that's strange. And then another sister, she says, you know, a couple years ago, I had a dream just like that. And I was riding around like I was protecting this girl and, you know, I was able to save her. I was like, okay, so you mean to tell me the three of us had this same exact dream where we're riding around protecting this girl we never seen before and all of a sudden we save her and that's the end of the dream. That's not by coincidence. And now I understand that's what we did. That wasn't like, that wasn't just a thing that we had a dream about. That was a, that was an experience that we had. That was a literal experience that we had in the past wandering around in the dream world, saving people, you know, keeping people from being hurt. That's what we did. And I didn't realize that until I read that article. That's why I couldn't talk. I said, I can't believe this. This is what this is. That's what we did. That's who we were. We are those quote unquote witches that did that, that saved these people. We did that. That was our, that was our past life experience. And so, you know, and it has a double meaning because I, like I told y'all before I had a, you know, I heard a voice that tell me we had to give Lilith a happy ending. And we also did that too. That was, you know, all, to me, for me, that was like the representation of giving Lilith a happy ending, rescuing her out of this, you know, dark place and, you know, getting her back to the surface, bringing her to air and really making sure people had a, you know, a real understanding of who we're dealing with. And so these things that we have, um, you know, the Gentiles and the heathens call demons, they're not demons. They're demons to them because they are demons. They're demonic and they have bad intentions. And so they, they are demons to them, but they're not demons to us. And thus you have in Revelation, you know, the, the way that they, the way that has been um, interpreted as that this entity, this serpent is, is wicked. That's not what that is. And if you look at the Shem, you know, back to Elder Almond Shem, you know, that's exactly, it, it has a red circle, you know, and then it has one gold, it has a, 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 a gold X, but it has a silver line. So basically that is a representation of the, the circle, the serpent as a circle, and then the serpent as, um, uh, as the straight line or the father image. So it is, it is both in one that that's what we got. That's, that's what the Shem is. And so, um, you know, um, I do want to shout out this, all this AI artwork that I've been using, um, is from a girl who's on Twitter. Her name is, um, Destiny K Rainbow. Um, her AI artwork is beautiful. It definitely seems to me to be divinely inspired, um, you know, uh, uh, definitely by the feminine energy. And so I wanted to share her, um, her beautiful artwork. Cause I know a lot of people aren't on Twitter. They wouldn't see it. You've heard a lot of things about AI and all of that, but nobody talks about this stuff. Nobody talks about the representation of the mother that comes through in this. And so, um, upon my asking, she developed a, um, a link tree. Uh, not a link tree to develop a fine art America. Cause I'm not into, these are all sold as like, um, NFTs, which I don't know anything about NFTs. So I asked her to, if she would put some of them in actual physical artwork, which she has. And so I put her link tree, um, in my bio so you can go and check out her artwork. Um, it's really, really beautiful. Um, you know, it's, it's very, it's, it's really beautiful. It's, it's really beautiful. And so I suggest you check her out. Um, and I did just want to give her a shout out because I do appreciate the artwork. And since I'm using it, I definitely want people to 
um, to go in. If they like any of her prints, definitely make some purchases because um, I definitely am going to. Um, she has so many beautiful things. Um, you know, because what happened was, you know, I, I was on Twitter and she was saying that she hadn't sold any of her NFTs in a while. And I was like, well, that's really sad. And so I went to her link tree to see, because her stuff is beautiful. So I went to her link tree to see, you know, what exactly she had for sale. And of course, a bunch of it was like, <laughs> they're NFTs and I don't know what NFTs are. So I was like, um, do you think you can put some like digital prints up? Because like, I don't know what NFTs are, but I would certainly buy prints. And so she, um, she, she, she responded to me and she, she put them up on Fine Art America. Um, so that means you can get it on canvas and all of that. So I'm definitely going to go and, um, you know, make a purchase from her and, and show that, you know, her work is beautiful and is definitely inspired by the mother, especially this one. This one I thought went perfectly with talking about the Olympic spirit. So I wanted to share that with you guys so you can um, go and support her. I don't know if she's, you know, one of our people or not, but the artwork, it, it's, it reeks of the mother. And um, I wanted to share it with everybody. So whew, that was a, that was a lot, y'all. We just went through a whole journey, um, a journey to excellence. And I am quite excited um, about uh, where we're headed. So to the spirits who are here with us, you're invited to go in peace. To my beloved viewers, you're invited to be at peace. And always remember, the Most High is your peace. Shalom, everyone.